pleased to have right here in studio uh, the host of Car Matchmaker that airs Tuesdays 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Esquire Network. You can also follow him on Twitter at Spike Ferriston. Spike Ferriston, good to see you here, sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm a fan of your work. Oh, thank you. Um, certainly, uh, I'm a big Seinfeld aficionado. <laughs> and to meet the man who wrote the Soup Nazi episode, that is a that is a work of genius. I am Spike. well, thanks. But you've met three of the men who worked okay. on that episode. It's, I think you interviewed Larry David. I have and Jerry Seinfeld, and now uh, me. You. Yeah. So, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind, then pull the hood off, to use the phrase, obviously, mm -hmm. that, of of this interview, on the collaboration that goes down, where something like you and Larry and and Jerry collaborate on something like that. I came right off the staff of Late Night with David Letterman, and mm -hmm. I had been going to have lunch with the real soup Nazi in New York. And, and what happened was I was pitching episodes for my first episode. Had never really written half hours before. Mm -hmm. Didn't do very well with my first 10 pitches and started sweating a little bit. Okay. And uh, the conversation turned to what, what's going on in New York, anything going on there? And I said, yeah, you know, there's this and that. And I get soup from this weird guy called the soup Nazi, and Larry started laughing. He goes, well, what do you mean, the soup nuts? And I'm like, well, you have to do everything right in line, or he takes the soup back and gives you your money back. Now, the both of them are laughing. <laughs> and Larry goes, that's your first episode. And I said, I wasn't pitching. I was just telling you stories. So, like, that's your first episode. And they just kind of usher and me out the go. door. Yeah, go. Start uh, fleshing it out. Start working out the outline. See if you can get it up to act one. Right. Um, so from there, I'm in, you know, and in an office talking to the writers going, I'm kind of confused at what just happened, but they're saying it's, it's great what just happened. You just sold an episode and, you know, you just, you, I was taking four stories, one for each character and working them out to about the act break. And then you'd go into Larry and Jerry and pitch it to them. They'd add a few things, subtract a few things, and eventually you'd go to script and write a draft. And then how do you come up with No Soup for You? As that no line, Soup right? for You is, that's the documentary part of this episode. In fact, there are many parts of this episode that happened in real life. No Soup for You came from the real guy, Al Yeganek. He would say that to you? He no would, soup he for would you? yell it at us. Not me, I was good at it. <laughs> I very quickly, <laughs> let's not make it, I was one of the good customers. Okay. It was the people who didn't follow the example. Uh, the, the first time um, Jerry goes, I think he's, it's with George, and George screws up. Yes. That's me and a writer, Dave Hansen, who was also on staff. I'm George. That really happened the first time. I Wait, got you screwed up. I screwed up. Mm -hmm. I didn't take it seriously. I was like, what are you talking about? I just want to buy soup from this guy. And I was uh, told no soup for you. Was, from that moment on, yeah. I did it exactly right. Was the soup really that good in real life? It's, that, it's, that, that you had, that yeah. it was worth Falling in line in that, in that way? Absolutely. This guy, you know, it was rumored to travel the world in uh -huh. the summer getting new soups when he was closed, <laughs> new right. recipes. And he would come back in the fall, open up the shop, and there'd be these, like, I don't know, African peanut soups and all of these genius soups. Right. You know, just imagine New York, 20 degrees, or it's cold. You walk down the street and you get this incredible soup mm -hmm. with a piece of bread and fruit, if you're lucky. If you're, doing <laughs> if you're right. lucky, <laughs> for like ten bucks, and it was a great lunch. Well, before we get to your your current uh, show and and incarnation, uh, if you'll just indulge me, because I I'm seriously such a huge fan of of your work and these shows, the bookstore episode, where right. the book was essentially mm -hmm. marked as having been in the bathroom, right. Yeah. Did I write that episode? It seems like you did not, because you've been credited for that. We got that one. Oh, yeah. You know, I might have worked with another writer on it. Okay. So which one would you then claim credit to? With the, the muffin tops, would you claim muffin credit? Muffin tops? I mean, they all... I mean, yeah. I mean, that's another part of my life, too. That was... Uh, Top of the muffin to you. I have, yeah. I have okay. that on a clock in my office right now. I bought it on eBay. <laughs> Where somebody I made... got no percentage of that money. <laughs> Someone is making Top of the Muffin to you right. clocks. And that happened to you in, as well? Uh, I had a girlfriend just... in New York who um, just ate the tops of muffins and mm -hmm. wanted to start at just a muffin top store. Very successful kind of fashion designer girl. I never understood why she wanted to do it. So uh -huh. um, I popped that story into the show, and it became a story for Elaine. Yeah, sitting here in this chair on Friday um, to fill in is Jeff Schaefer. Oh, yeah. From your... Uh, from your oeuvre. Jeff from Schaefer Seinfeld is hosting? Well. Yeah, he is. Oh, my God. Yes. What's going on at Direct TV that Jeff Schaefer's hosting well, a show? Well, I mean, there's, there's various <laughs> things afoot. Uh, I, I'm going to be coming back from Charlotte for right. Thursday Night Football, so I physically can't be. No, I understand that, that part, part of, of it. it. The Jeff Schaefer part well, of I mean, it he's, a, it. He's, a, he's one of those rare Seahawk-Browns <laughs> hybrids. That's true. Okay, so yeah. I want to show that sort of uh -huh. uh, carnival act off to the unsuspecting viewing public. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and he's, you know, the league. He's got the fantasy football show. Again, these are all behind-the-scene jobs. <laughs> I'm not understanding this part of it. So, I know Jeff Schaefer, the Jeff Schaefer yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, I know. I'm handing the keys Does to the car. Does he even know what these things are over here? He, I think he, well, he knows, but behind them, yeah. you know, in front of that them. That little countdown clock you got yeah. going on. Does he understand? So are you saying this could be a train wreck on Friday? Uh, I'm, like, yeah, I'm outright <laughs> saying it is going to be a train wreck, and you better have one of these other guys stand in for you. No, they'll be here. Yeah. They'll be here. They'll be here to help out. So the the show that you have on Esquire Network, Car Matchmaker, mm -hmm. also from from the two people <clears throat> that you've already mentioned here, Jerry and Dave, uh, have big car affections for yeah, cars, and that that rubbed off on it you. It naturally kind of grew out of it. I mean, I, I, there's a long history with comedians in cars. You know, even Johnny Carson. You know, you remember his white Corvettes. Sure. I think it's because like comedians are uh, fun experts. <laughs> you know, they're just they understand fun mo better than most people. And you know, having brushed up against uh, D Dave for five years on his show, and then go right from there to to Seinfeld. We all know what he's up to with cars. It just kind of spun me out and really fed my, you know, passion or possibly addiction to cars yeah. and collecting and driving. Car Matchmaker airing Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern on the Esquire Network here. Let's, uh, let's take a little look. You know, in Car Matchmaker, I help people find cars that fit perfectly in their life and that they fall in love with. This is an example of a car I found that I totally fell in love with. These engines are bulletproof. The car has so much beautiful design inside and out, you know, it's like a vintage watch almost, you know, it's just you can't stop looking at it when it's in front of you. And out here, people have a fascination with their automobiles yeah. out here. So <clears throat> well, in the show, I help people, normal uh, folks from around the country come to me, they don't know what to buy, I right. get to know them a little bit, and then I use my experience to recommend three cars that'll work perfectly in their life. We drive them like we hate them, we do things you can't do in a dealership, and mm -hmm. then at the end, they pick one. So based on their personality, just have you having not met them? It's and... just any car guy and anybody listening who's a car guy, if you're the car guy in your neighborhood, people yeah. come to you all the time, family, friends. They always want you to either validate a choice or they want you to just your outright help. Right. And, uh, and, and, and you know, that's, that's what we do on the show. We kind of make that decision a little easier for Interesting. them. Interesting. That's, uh, that's, that's some neat stuff, man. I mean, should, should we... Mike Del Tufo. <laughs> Mike, I'm going to... What, just tell, tell Spike a little something about yourself. We'll see if he can fix you up with a car. What do you think? I like convertibles. He likes convertibles. Black. What do you drive right now, Mike? Yeah. I have two cars. A Whoa. Mercedes. But, and you don't, have a, you don't have a wife or children. No children. But you have two cars yes. as a single man. See, yes. Mike's this already way ahead of the game. He's, that's absolutely what I would recommend for every guy. They should have two cars. Two cars. Their oh, daily amazing. driver. <laughs> And then their weekend fun car. Is that how you've got it set up? It convertible. He doesn't need my help. Yes. This guy is set. <laughs> this guy knows he's your car matchmaker right on set. No, I you think know, he... you, know, you know who needs help? The guy who drives the soccer mom car. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> what is that? What is that? It's a nice, economical, safe. Just say it. It's a Honda CRV. Honda CRV, right? I, I mean, I don't get. It's like regular matchmaking. If you're happy with who you've married or yeah. you're dating, who who am I to but get what in the way of it? What if he's settled though? It, it is a little what bit embarrassing. I'm not he's got lie. kids. No, I doesn't. don't. No. Oh well, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. This is weird. Now, like, <laughs> <laughs> now you're like the the dog lady in the neighborhood who's walking dogs or something. There's there's got to be a reason for it. What are you what are you hauling around that you need an SUV? Not not my, I had a motorcycle for a long time. Right. And that was my only mode. That's and I cool. wanted just something comfortable, economical on gas. And yeah. yeah. You know. I'm, are you are you, you going to try to date anytime soon? Uh, I am married. And <laughs> he's married. That be oh, he's married. So I see what's kids. going on here. Yeah. 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 But, but it, still, that wife wants a good date car. She wants something to go out in on a Thursday, Friday night. Exactly. Yeah. That looks nice. Let yeah. Spike help Doesn't you. Doesn't have to be cost you a lot of money. So you're saying the CRV is not that? Yeah. Can we get you on yeah. season two? Yeah. 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 Are you excited about getting in? Yeah, are you taking applicants day? over there for season two? <laughs> are you excited about getting in it? That's a very good question. Uh, Every day in the morning. Uh, I, <laughs> uh, yes, it's warm seat warmers. It's high up the ground. Well, nice. see, again, I can't help people that are happy. That's true. I might be able to do an intervention if we all got together and got organized and presented him with the evidence <laughs> of how he looks that car. <laughs> how can you argue with a man who says, well, my car has seat warmers? You, you can't, you right? You would not believe, of all the driver's aids this year that come out, so much attention is paid to the buttocks. Seat coolers, seat warmers, seat coolers. butt woofers from stereo, and people love it. They absolutely go nuts for it. You're exactly like 
everybody I had on the show, myself included. No kidding. But a seat, seat warmer, I sort of can understand. Right. Seat cooler. I love just it. Oh my God! It. Until you try it. it out in LA, you don't even know what you're talking about. It. Have you tried Wait, it? That's have, a real I, thing. I, seat cooler. Yes. Yeah. In the back it is. and the butt, so you're cooler. driving around air-conditioned back. That's you amazing. You know that sweat you get when you're in traffic yeah, on the four hundred. Wow. It's gone. It's, it's just gone. Really? Yeah. Because I just turn on the regular air and figure it'll eventually <laughs> get to those spots. It's blowing on your back. I'm missing out, is what you're saying. Totally missing out. And oh forget about the goodness. butt vibrating. You know, I don't know where you go in that, <laughs> that category. That's but true. Some stereo systems, like in the Jeep, are blasting you from below. Is that what the V and CRV stands <laughs> <Yeah>. for? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I don't have one of those. Wow. Um, listen, Spike, this has been a blast. Uh, I would love to have you back on because there's so many different things I'd love to ask you about, about working with Letterman Anytime. and obviously all these cars. And, yeah, I'd and, love to come back and talk about it. And, and especially, um, I'm going to maybe have to come on your show since you are uh, basically saying that my show will end after Jeff Schaefer's. <laughs> I'm not saying that. You're going to do just fine. Okay, so. I would just say have some alcohol or a Valium for Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> have someone ready to dab his forehead just in case he panics. Oh, so he's a sweater? He's an uninitiated host. Uh -huh. Has he ever hosted a show before? No. So just be prepared. Maybe a diaper, an adult diaper, <laughs> just in case he Chevy chases on us. Maybe we could we could get some sort of Depends sponsorship between now and Friday. That I we am could so ever... happy we got to talk about Jeff Schaefer. This Me is too. really fun. Me... I cannot wait to talk to him now after this. <laughs> Good to see you, Spike. Good to see you, too. You bet. Watch Car Matchmaker airing Tuesdays, 9 p.m. Eastern time on Esquire Network. With uh, Spike Ferris. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.